In this video, we are trying French low-cost carrier Transavia. Are they worth it? Let's find out. You join me in the taxi from the hotel. I did a review of that hotel in my past video, so be sure to check that out. As we are traveling to the international airport to catch my flight back home to Paris Orly on Transavia on a new airline. Come along with me and let's fly. We have just checked in for our flight to Paris and we are now heading for security. Today we are flying Transavia uh, back to Orly. So follow me on this journey back home. I'll see you guys past security. Our flight today was just under two hours and 30 minutes. After takeoff, it flew north over Sfax, Monastir, crossed the Mediterranean and flew over Sardinia, Corsica, then crossed uh, the bay between Corsica and the mainland France. It flew over Nice, over the southern uh, part of the country, before descending into Paris Orly, and despite being half an hour late on takeoff, landed back on time on the eastern runway. Before leaving Tunisia, I just had to have one of those last pistachio snacks. It was really tasty. So, after having uh, had a little bit of a snack, uh, let's have a look at the departure lounge here in the international airport, well, the international side of the airport in Djerba, Tunisia. So uh, there are two main concourses. Uh, flights to France usually depart from gates um, 1 till 6 and uh, right on the other side there is another concourse with uh, gates um, 7 till uh, 12 and uh, yeah today well, at least right now it seems like most of the uh, afternoon flights have already left about 20 minutes ago there was a Nouvelle Air flight leaving to Medina in Saudi Arabia uh, and this is pretty much uh, quite empty at the moment unfortunate but uh, at least it's somewhat busy these guys are interested we have been struggling during the pandemic so uh, a quick look at the amenities here so there's a duty free I mean, where you can get all the basic stuff um, for a fairly decent price and right on the other side of that duty free there is uh, the other concourse where uh, the flight to Medina departed earlier and I believe the next flight to depart in this area is in just under two hours and it's heading to Luxembourg but I'm not heading there uh, as I said earlier I'm heading to uh, to Paris Orly on Transavia for the first time in a long time I'm flying a 737 and for the first time ever I'm flying Transavia and as you can see the desert mist over there has started to, uh, to set and it was quite sunny earlier although the weather forecast did say it was going to be uh, quite misty today so we got lucky Anyway, I'll catch you guys during boarding. So, uh, so far, thank you for watching and uh, let's find out what Transavia is all about. As I was boarding, I uh, saw what brought me to Tunisia. So uh, keep an eye up because I will make a review quite soon in the shorts. The island of Gerba was quite important in Roman times. So when you're walking around the airport, you will see a few art pieces referencing to their past. Quite interesting to see how big the Roman Empire was. Meanwhile, our 10-year-old 737-800 registered Foxtrot Hotel Uniform Alpha was crossing the Mediterranean Sea not so far away from Sicily, which is interesting knowing the reference we just made from the Roman Empire. The flight time to Gerba, much like on the way here, is just over two hours faster than the flight back because of tailwinds when flying east. This is a common fact in aviation. Flying east is usually faster. And just 
Under 40 minutes later, the aircraft was already at the gate, deplaning, and we were getting ready for boarding. I had little idea just how chaotic boarding was going to be. Keep on watching to find out why. First, let's have a look at the seats. Transavia has a seating plan laid out in a 3-3 configuration across roughly 32 rows. I was sat on seat 18, Foxtrot. Well, boarding today was quite something. <clears throat> we were told to dispatch uh, around the hall and then made boarded into like two different gate areas. We're not even on the plane yet, so boarding but not boarding. This is quite usual for low-cost carriers, but uh, the whole disorganization when it comes to the gate is something I haven't really been used to. Blame it on the airline, blame it on the airport. I mean, if you've already done this flight before, flown between these two airports, uh, do let me know in the comments below if this is usual or uh, if this is just a special treatment for Transavia. I am looking forward to the experience on board though. First time flying this airline and first time flying the 737 in a long time. I'll catch you guys in the cabin and uh, yeah, continue watching to find out more about this adventure. We're supposed to take off now but uh, we're still in the bus so uh, looks like we're going to have a bit of a delay, maybe 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. We'll see. And after a few minutes, we finally boarded the 737. One of my favorite features of the livery on this airline is the fact that uh, the greeting signs are put in all of the languages of all the destinations they fly to and used to fly to. A very personal touch which is appreciated by passengers. Right, let's head inside. This is my seat for today, seat 18 Foxtrot, with the most iconic view of the wing on the 737. Perfect for Instagram. Unfortunately though, it was night time, so difficult to take pictures. If you're the average height like me, the width will be perfect, and actually the seat is alright to be honest. Well, this seat is super comfortable. I love the green colours, it's something quite unusual. So, so far the seats next to me are free in the row as well, but uh, I don't think that will be the case. Looking at uh, the expert flyer, the uh, seat map was full uh, earlier. This uh, craft, despite being 10 years old, has Boeing's brand new sky interior, so it must have been revamped recently. And of course, most importantly, he has the wing view. So yeah, so far, the first impression is that it's really good. Uh, this is a low-cost carrier, so there is no uh, complimentary meal, but I'll buy something and test something for you guys. I'll also show you the menu. So uh, we'll see you guys um, probably on the ground, as filming my face when the flight is full will be a bit complicated. After half an hour delay, we pushed back and made our way to the active runway for our departure. Soon after takeoff, cabin crew were preparing the meal service. So let's look at the tray table, which can be moved and retracted. Um, it looks quite sturdy for a low-cost airline. Honestly, well done Transavia. As the meal service began, I chose the 10 euro meal deal, which included a snack of your choice, that was those chicken uh, crisps, as well as a drink of my choice, that was a Coca-Cola, and a meal of my choice, instant noodles, quite interesting for a low-cost carrier, and my favourite, miso soup. It was actually quite tasty, and I didn't expect a low-cost carrier to serve something so nice. As you can see, I ate the whole thing. So yeah, Transavia, you have a very nice meal service, and it's actually quite affordable. I hope you are enjoying this video so far, and if you do, please like and subscribe. This helps me create more content. I recently broke my bag, so I needed a new thing to pull the zip. Thankfully, Transavia has a uh, gift service, and I bought one of these removed before flights. Again, really affordable, only 3 euros. Really impressed by Transavia so far. The time flew really fast, and before long, uh, the cabin was getting prepared for landing. So my final thoughts on Transavia are that they are in fact Europe's best uh, low-cost carrier in my experience. The seats are really comfortable, the service is truly amazing. Okay, the clients have some issues, we had people fighting as we disembarked, but that can happen anywhere. So remember to be nice with your crew and just simply enjoy. So yes, to answer the question in the thumbnail, Transavia is the best airline in Europe.